74. And for generations we've raised crossbred cattle and horses, registered quarter horses. And then we, in the 60s, went to raising Charlay cattle, registered Charlay cattle, and, and bred up a real good herd. <clears throat> Well, for years we had a, a good, dependable calving rate. The cattle bred when they were supposed to, and the bulls were all fertile, and the man things were just like they were supposed to be. Well, they're not like that these days. We've had uh, a noticeable decrease in the calving rate. The cattle aren't as fertile as they used to be, and the bulls aren't as fertile as they used to be. Good gosh used to sell every one of our bulls. Anyway though, uh, I guess I am basing that just on tribal knowledge or historical knowledge, but we did have a, a herd study that was performed, uh, concluded about three or four years ago. It was a three-year herd study, real in-depth study where they took tissue samples and soil samples, and blood and urine and fecal samples, Good gosh, they sampled everything but me. And uh, what they determined was that we have uh, in encountered quite a bit of DNA damage, genetic damage at the DNA level, I should say. And I'm not speaking from being an educated guy, but they proved uh, with their methods that there's no doubt that we have we've seen some genetic damage in these cattle. And so that sort of supports all these feelings we've been having for these years. I guess the thing that makes me worry the most about it, John, is you know, if you're having genetic damage in your cattle, well, that affects your pocketbook, you know, and it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit because your family's always been into raising good quality stock. But the most important thing right now on my mind is wonder what kind of damage is happening to me. You know, the methods that they used to determine this were painstakingly done and redone and checked and double checked and triple checked and and, uh, and they did that for a reason because it could be the foundation for a lot of studies in the, in the future. But I'll tell you this, I don't know if there's going to be in time to do me any good if there's going to be any human studies that are uh, going to tell me whether I've had any damage or not. That's the thing that kind of worries me. My kids are gone. I don't, I'm not going to encourage them to come back here, and I'm not sure I'm going to retire here. Uh, just, just for that reason, it's kind of, it's kind of got me worried. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't know much more to say about it than that. You know, I, uh, I loved growing up here. Well, my family loved growing up here. I'm not sure what kind of, what kind of exposure they've had. You know, they've been out outside. You know how kids are, good gosh, they've got everything in their mouth all the time and out there sucking up everything, no, no telling what <laughs> what they've been exposed to. So I guess time will tell on that, but I do know that people on the coast, there's a, there's a lot of, I think a higher rate of cancer and deaths from cancer along the Gulf Coast than any other place in our state. I'm pretty sure it's attributable, although I don't know if they can prove it yet or not, to petrochemical industry. And I know one thing about petrochemical plants, I've worked in several of them, and I worked at Formosa Plastics out here. I'll give you a shot of it here in just a minute, right? I can see it from my pasture all the time. But I've worked in several petrochemical plants, and, uh, and I know they make pretty nasty stuff, all of them do. But the one thing I, I noticed when I worked out here, and it, and it took me about eight months to get out of there once I got a job out there, it took me eight months to find another one. And I've been there, I've been gone ever since. <clears throat> what I noticed was that this plant has, uh, it, it's just, it's so obvious that their safety practices or their uh, industrial practices, the quality of the equipment that they use, uh, the, the redundant systems that they do not have, they're totally different from anything I ever worked at before and that's what made, that's what scared me when I first came to work out there. And uh, I guess if I hadn't uh, just left that other place, I'd have gone back to it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I went to work at a nuclear plant. Yeah, but I've been associated with this plant out here through this this ranch for 
well, about 25 years now. And uh, frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit worried, John, uh, about what my future's gonna hold. I don't think I'm gonna be able to live out my rest, the rest of my years here comfortably because I think I'll be too worried about what's going on with my, my air and my water and my, my being out in it. And, and when I retire, I'll be out in it a lot more. <laughs> Let me get out here so we can show you what this place looks like a little bit. Okay. okay.